Okay, hello guys. So today, um, I'm gonna just doing a fast video and just gonna be a playoff teriyaki beef. So what I'm gonna do is, right now we're gonna chuck roll in front of us. Um, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna braise this chuck roll. Um, of course, I'm gonna cut them into like stew meat, right? Like stew chunks. I'm gonna braise them. Then I'm gonna add the teriyaki at the end and we make teriyaki beef. So like teriyaki steak or teriyaki beef, but you know, just a whole different style of making them. We do this when we get big banquets and we don't have time for grill a lot of meat and whatnot. Uh, does it taste good? Yeah, it's, it's actually really good. Um, you might not have the smoke taste on it, but you will get the tenderness out of it, which compensates for the smoke taste. So um, let me start breaking down this uh, chuck roll and I get back to you guys. Also, you guys know, yeah, when you guys break down chuck roll, get about four or five different muscles inside this chuck roll, right? It's not just one muscle with it, all the grain running one way. If you can, try break down the separate uh, muscles and then break them down across the grain. Now, we're gonna braise them, so it's gonna be soft with whichever way, but still yet, if you, and we're using good beef. Another thing I want to, before I, I get into breaking down the chuck roll, use good beef, okay? As you guys can see here, we use always we always use certified Angus beef. Um, that's like the top 8% of the beef in the nation uh, when it comes to choice beef. And uh, But use good beef. I mean, when you braise, yeah, the thing comes soft. But you notice when you braise, braise cheaper beef, um, it tends to get stringy a lot. Also, when you when you cut in your beef, if you go with the grain, if you get a lot of chunks with the grain, you will notice uh, sh more stringier pieces than, than if you cut them against the grain, okay? So anyway, uh, let me go start breaking this down. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when I break them down. Throw them in the pot, we're gonna braise them. All we're gonna do is braise them with water and a couple bay leaves, that's it. Uh, no salt, no nothing. Uh, we add the seasonings at the end, of course, with the teriyaki sauce and I actually... Okay guys, so I said breaking down this chuck roll right now. I just want to show you guys, so you notice the chuck roll gets so much different muscles, yeah? Um, this one right here and then this one going one different way and then even this one going one different way and then you know not a muscle over here so as I break it down I just cutting around cutting against the grain taking this so I don't cut against the grain and so on and so forth yeah but just letting you guys know so let me break down this chuck row again uh, totally and then um, I put in everything into one stainless steel pot right here it doesn't have to be stainless steel not you using any acid stuff but as you can see I kind of breaking down everything against the grain yeah and then I cut them into strips like this uh, so we braise them try cut uniform try get as close as each other's piece as possible so the thing kind of braise at the same time and uh, you know cook fully through at the same time yeah so let me get through with this thing and then uh, I get back to you guys when I start braising okay I'll be back okay guys Okay guys, so I'm break down the whole chuck roll, yeah? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fill them up with water, just regular old tap water. Um, we like them just cover the meat. I mean, literally just cover the meat because the, the, the meat itself can let go some juices, yeah? Then I'm gonna throw a couple bay leaves inside there and then that's it, we're gonna start braising. I get about 20 pounds of beef in there, so you know, my braising time is gonna vary as the amount of meat you, you guys use, but uh, Okay, so just just about cover, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a couple of babies in there. But you guys judge. For me, this is gonna take about three hours, three hours for braise and get soft. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the the water. But you know that water you guys saved is now that is not uh, you know when you do bones as stock, and then when you do meat that's um oh, I forgot the name of it. But anyway, um it's a broth. Okay, so when you do um when you braising beef or you cook beef, uh, any muscle in liquid that becomes broth and when you do bones that's stock okay but you guys can keep the keep the broth uh, for use for something else okay so let me go get those babies in there let me get them on the oven and uh, I mean on the stove and then um, as we almost done with the braise I get back to you guys and show you guys how I do the second step of this all right so anyway um, I just wanted to mention a couple things over here so um, I see I get the pot on the fire right now. Make sure you guys put it on a high fire to begin with. And then after it starts boiling, then you guys turn down it to a, a medium simmer, okay? Um, don't put it on medium low at the beginning because number one, it will take too long to do it. And number two that is that uh, 
did just to take too long to do it. <laughs> anyway, so high fire first, get it boiling, and then bring it down to a simmer. Um, you notice that I did put a lid on it. Uh, that just helps to the kind. And you know, one of my uh, one of my cooks over here said, Chef, you just keep you saying braising, but we're actually boiling, right? Yeah, we actually are boiling. Um, we're not really braising, um, but you can braise in the oven if you want, a uh, small amount of water. But yeah, right now I am boiling and uh, and then to make the meat soft, yeah? So just a correction there. Um, but anyway, anyway, so just let you guys know, get it on high fire first, bring it up to boil, and then turn it down to a medium so. Okay, we shall see you folks. Hello, guys. So, okay, hello, guys. So we're back, yeah. Uh, so we right now, we're about halfway through the uh, braising, uh, boiling process, braising process, whatever you want to say. Um, but as you can see, we still got about, it's about hour half in, we got still about another hour half to go. But like I say, for you guys, check you guys meet every once in a while. Um, we want to braise it soft, but we don't want it to start falling apart, like like you're getting pulled, pulled beef or something like that, right? You still want some structure into that beef. But, um, so for us, we're gonna go about another hour. We're gonna check it, then probably half hour increments before we check it again. So anyway, just to show you guys, um, we always have the cover on while we're braising. Um, just to, it speeds up the process a little bit, yeah. So anyway, I'll get back to you guys in a little bit, and uh, when the, the product is finished, and I'll show you guys how we mix the terrier sauce into the meat, and we, we actually drain the meat. Um, we save the we save the broth, uh, drain the meat, and. Um, We'll add the sauce to it and let it kind of braise in the sauce for a couple of minutes. And then we'll add sauce as we pull out everybody's order, yeah? Okay, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, hello guys. So the braising is done or the boiling is done, whichever way you want to put it. Um, so the meat actually, to tell you the truth, I went two and a half hours. I probably shouldn't have gone the last 20 minutes. Um, for me, it's a little too soft, but... But it's okay if it's for home and whatnot. So it's fall apart soft right now. I want a little bit more structure to the meat. That's why I let it cool down a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just dip it or get a bowl of teriyaki sauce. And we're going to just soak it in there for a couple of minutes and then plate it. Um, the teriyaki will get in there. Um, and we'll add some sauce at the end. But when I start to plate this thing, I'll show you guys how we soak it in the teriyaki first, and then um, then how we plate it. It's basic Hawaiian Hawaiian style plate lunch. Going to have two scoop of rice, macaroni salad, and teriyaki beef. Okay. So anyway, just to let you guys know, this is so we're just doing a different way to do teriyaki meat right now, teriyaki beef. Yeah. Instead of grilling on the outside, we actually braise the beef. Uh, we braise a chuck roll to it soft and. Um, and then we're going to soak in the teriyaki sauce. It's gonna, a lot of flavor. Remember now, um, all we added in there was the water to just to cover the meat and a few bay leaves. And that was it. I ordered nothing else. No salt, no pepper, no nothing. And then we're going to do them in the teriyaki sauce. We get a lot of flavor. Bay leaves help that savory taste to come out. But uh, anyway, I'll show you guys when the, when you start to plate up and soak them in the teriyaki meat. Okay, so I'll be back in a bit. Okay guys, so anyway, this is how we're doing the teriyaki. So I just took the beef and I basically went just put them in one bowl of teriyaki, yeah? And um, I let them soak for a couple minutes or even a minute. A minute is fine. And then all we do is we plate them up after that. So as you can see, I get the plate of macaroni, salad, and rice. And then this teriyaki beef, um, we just plate them up. Everything's cold right now because this is a grab-and-go dish. So I cooled everything off, but when you heat them up, you know, it'll become soft and pliable again, yeah, soft and, uh, and I'm going to give them one, uh, one, uh, container of teri uh, teriyaki sauce too, yeah, so. And if you guys like know, the, the portion size is 10 ounces, I get 10 ounces of beef inside here. So when I weigh everything out, we teach our crew to weigh everything out. Um, especially when it comes to grab and go stuff. You just like consistency and you watch your food costs and everything that way, yeah. But that's pretty much it. That's kind of how we go about doing this. Um, okay. So anyway, um, teriyaki beef, just a new style or a new way of doing teriyaki beef. 
Um, we braise the beef first, make it into, um, you know, this consistency of stew meat or, or, or pot rolls, but just with teriyaki on it. Um, just like I said, just a new way to do things, guys. Um, we do these, we do this when we got a large amount to do, or we're doing like a you know, 500 person banquet where we cannot just have one cook sitting there and cooking teriyaki beef all day because by the time the first one she cook already gonna be dried out and the last one she cook still gonna be, you know, it's gonna be good, but you kinda just do them all one time. And then if we're doing a large banquet, we'll just dump the whole pot of, we'll put the teriyaki sauce in our tits, in our 55 gallon tooth skillet, dump all the meat inside there and just pick them out and plate them from the tilt skillet. Okay, when well, there's just a new way to show you guys how we do teriyaki beef. Um, give them a try at home. You guys will really like it. Um, I don't know if this is true or not, but I believe if you guys remember guys who live in Hawaii or still living in Hawaii when you used to have Hungry Hunter before. Was it Hungry Hunter or Hungry, Hungry Lion? Hungry Lion, I think is the name. Hungry Lion and by over there, Liliha. Uh, I believe they used to do their beef this way, the teriyaki beef. Yes, we have there was some good teriyaki beef and was always like stew meat tender kind. And I believe this is the way they did it. But um, if it's not, then don't get mad at me. And if you guys was working at Hungry Lion, don't get mad at me, okay? i just thinking that this is the way they used to do Anyway, you guys stay blessed out there. You guys take care and stay out of the nonsense, okay? And I wish you to see you guys in the next video. And I'll try to get more videos up, but this was just a short Thing to show you how different ways we make teriyaki beef. Alright, take care, stay blessed, and we'll see you folks in the next video. Aloha!